Okay, so we are back, Gary, discussing our discussion. Um, okay, so now one of the things you did, and I don't know if you know you did this, but I, uh, you, you sort of just reiterated your main point without taking in without taking into consideration any of the things that I was trying to get at. Now it could be my point. It could be could be my fault. I might not have been clear in what where I was going, but let's take three beings, okay? For argument's sake, let's call one Craig the Holy Man. Craig the Holy Man is an absolutely wonderful moral person. He's he's kind-hearted, he's patient and loving, he spends his time, you know, uh, debating patiently with atheists, trying to get them to see that God is real. He's very kind and warm and patient. And in his spare time, he makes ice cream for handicapped kids. So he's just a wonderful moral being. Uh, guy number two, let's call him Gary the Atheist. Gary the Atheist is okay. You know, he's not, he's a decent guy. He's not a mean person. He's not like torturing children or beating up people for no reason. Um, you know, it could be argued he's a little stubborn. You, you tell him things and he doesn't necessarily take into consideration new information and change his mind very frequently. So he's got some flaws in, the, in overall, but he's a decent human being. Then we have Mengele the monster. Mengele the monster literally tortures children, literally enjoyed torturing children. Now, the key on the whole thing you focus, you focus in on the idea of God-created flawed beings. That's not really the issue. The issue I was pointing out, the important thing, is that God created beings independent of God with their own free will, which means their own desires, their own wants, their own needs, their own things that they, they care about and they want to do with the world that they live in. And those things are not necessarily emanations of God. God may able be able to influence those things, which will be important, but those things are not emanations of God. He did not create carbon copies of himself. He created beings that are completely independent of him. And these are three examples. Craig the hero of God, Gary the atheist, and Mengele the monster. Now, you seem to argue that Mengele the monster has no culpability in his crimes. Now, there, before, wait, before I get into it, one thing I want to clarify, because there is a really big difference. Some of the things that you talk about are theological questions. Some of the things are theological debates and hence interesting to me. Some of the things that you bring up are simply logic problems and hence unanswerable and, and really pointless and meaningless. Like, like the famous, you know, if God can't build a rock that he can't lift, then he's not omnipotent because he can't do it. And then if he builds the rock, he can't lift it, so he's not omnipotent. So God's not omnipotent. Ha ah, ha ha, look how clever. It's, those things are really, really stupid, and they're really pointless, and as a rule, I tend to avoid them. What you are talking about is actual theological problems, which are, have relevance to the actual world we live in, and, and are real questions about, you know, the nature of good, the nature of evil, what the nature of justice. Those I'm very interested in, and I will talk about those, you know, constantly. But but logic problems I'm not, and there's a difference between the two. Okay. Some of the things that you the reason why I bring that up is sometimes you fall into logic problems and not actually theological problems. Logic problems are not interesting. They're really not, and they're not, they're never, they're never meaningful or even worth pursuing or asking. But, so, getting back to the point I'm trying to make with the three, with the three beings. Whether the beings are flawed or not is not the issue. They may be flawed, but that was incidental. The important thing to note about the three beings is that they are independent of God. They were created to be entirely independent beings of God, which means the things that they want, the desire, are, are their own will, not God's will, necessarily. Now, God can influence them, which will be important in making, for example, Craig the Holy Man so holy. 
is that he is being influenced by the will of God, or so he thinks. Now, you are assuming that Mengele the monster has absolutely, or you are actually giving him no moral culpability in his behavior. It's really what you're doing. You're saying he is not morally culpable because God cre could have created him different than he is. No. Wrong. He is completely and 100% morally culpable because some other type of independent be being, independent of God, some other type of being would have been in the exact same situation and made completely different choices. For example, Gary the Atheist. Gary the Atheist may be stubborn, but he is, for the most part, kind, okay? And Gary the Atheist, it doesn't matter how he was raised, would not be torturing children as the end result of the things done to him, ever, because it is not part of his nature. That is why I say it, the mystery of iniquity, because there really is a deep mystery here. Why is evil so, so enjoyable to some people, whereas other people are good? And the, the mystery, we are all created independent of God, okay? All, all three of those beings are, have independent wills. But they make completely and utterly different choices. Now, to one degree or another, they all have the grace of God at work in their lives. Again, like I said, assuming, uh, assuming you know, for argument's sake, that God is real, we have all been raised with one degree or another, with, with some evidence in our lives of the goodness of God, some evidence of right behavior. We've seen some evidences of kindness and what that is. And, you know, we did not grow up in, in universes completely devoid of all light, which would be the only justification for someone like Mengele. Now, I don't know how he was raised, but I, he wasn't raised in a, in, a, you know, in, a, in a universe where he was tortured round the clock. Now, keep in mind, there will be a judgment day, and God will be 100% fair, which means I don't get to judge Mengele because I don't know how he was raised, and you don't get to judge him because you don't know. But God will know exactly how he was raised and exactly what type of decisions he should have made given the information that was available to him. So there will be an accounting, and that accounting will be completely fair. Because it will take into consideration if I put Gary the Atheist, a nice guy, in the exact same life that Mengele had, he would come out completely differently based on his own heart and what type of human being he was. So you're assuming no culpability on the part of Mengele. Don't. That's completely flawed. He's, he's completely culpable for what he did in, in his body. And that's what the Bible says, that we will be completely and 100% accountable for what we do in our body. Now, it also says that God will be completely fair. So, in other words, God will know what you, Gary the Atheist, you know, what type of person you should have become. Now, this, this, is, this is theoretical, so, you know, you don't have to take this personally. But, for example, okay, it's quite obvious to me that you are more intellectually gifted than most people and you are more philosophical and you have a capacity for, for thinking on higher levels than most people. Okay, the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. So when you actually stand before God, there's going to be some accounting of that. You're going to have to justify, you know, given the gifts that you were given, what type of person you could have been, you know, how good and morally, like, you could, you know, I don't know what that is, but God will know the exact type of person you could have been and the difference between what you were and what you could have been, okay? So you, you, will, be, you will be have to give account for the talents and the gifts that you have and your ability to perceive things that others can't. You know, not everybody's like you. You, you, you know, Mr. Joe Blow from, from Oklahoma you know, can't even think of the things on some of the levels that you can. But you're, you're going to have to give an account for that. Just like Mengele will have to give an account for all the evil things that he did. Now, you say that, no, you don't think eternal, eternal punishment is warranted. And I mean, you know, I, I understand where you're, in the abstract, sure. I've had that debate thousands of times, 
you know, with other Christians where, where we've said, like, you know, nobody could possibly deserve eternal punishment, not even Hitler. But again, that's not a real theological debate. That's a, that's a, I mean, I guess it is. We can, we can have that debate if you want, but, uh, you know, you can go on that. I, I'll, I'll engage it. I, I got over it a long time ago, but I can't necessarily say that I answered it satisfactorily. I just got over it because I know in my own experience that God is completely fair and it will be completely and utterly fair. Um, there is no reason on earth why Joseph Mengele had to become Joseph Mengele. He enjoyed it. He liked it on some level. He started torturing a kid and he said, this is great. This works for me. Okay. You would not, given all the things, if you walked in his body, you would not have wound up the same type of person. That's what makes him morally culpable. He's 100% morally culpable. You know, just as you will be morally culpable for the things you do. But... You know, there's not going to be a long list of crimes at the end of your life, I'm assuming. So, uh, you can answer this, and I'm not sure if I explained it that well, but try and, try and answer. You can, you can write me a novel on this, and then I'll try to make a better video. Uh, I think I got to the point I was trying to make, but I'm not sure. So, work with that. Thank you.